Paranormal Punches is part of the Podbelly Network. Go to podbelly.com for more great podcasts. Hey, y'all. This is Frank the Bigfoot, and you're listening to the Paranormal Puncher. Hey friends, <laughs> welcome to another episode of Paranormal Punchers. I'm Mark. I'm Alicia. I'm Nash. I'm Dave. And on this episode, we're going to travel down to uh, Houston to talk about the Houston Batman. Batman. <laughs> or the Batman of Houston. Yep. This is t- <laughs> <laughs> Good jump on that one. That was, that was, I like how you did that. Yeah. And this is going to take us all the way back. Oh. You know, in the second half, we got some fun things to talk about. Maybe some movie stuff, some listener feedback. Who knows? So stick around to the very end. None of this, listen to the topic and then jump it away. <laughs> Let us go back to June 18th of 1953. Mm-hmm. I thought you were going to do like Rod Serling there for a second. Picture, if you will, a sunny day, Houston, Texas, 1953. Okay, well, you just did it, so. Okay. Mm. Th- okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. The Houston. <laughs> <laughs> the- There's only one word into it. <laughs> the Houston Batman, also known as the Houston Horror, was a very tall man-like creature with bat wings that was seen for the first time in the yard of Hilda Walker. At 118 East 3rd Street in Houston, Texas. So, on a very hot, peaceful night, Hilda Walker, who was 23 at the time, Judy Meyer, who was 14, and Howard Phillips, uh, he was 33, all neighbors were sitting on Hilda's front porch around 2.30 in the morning on June 18th, 1953. 2.30 2 30 yeah, in the morning. Yeah, so if you're sitting yeah. on your porch on a summer day at 2.30 a.m., what are you doing? Yeah. You're getting schnockered. <laughs> well, <laughs> but there was uh, a 14 year old kid there. Right? Yeah. I guess. Oh, yeah, that blows that whole yeah. concept right. away. And th- this is the 50s. So, yeah. it, like, a housewife sitting with her n- older neighbor and yeah. a younger neighbor, like, this is already kind of suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> Now, because of the heat, I guess they were all having trouble sleeping. Hence, they were just sitting Makes outside. Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming they didn't have air conditioning. Right. Uh, it was 53. Right. Um, the only way you get every air conditioning is by running. I love that you're just like, yeah, no, it was 53. Of course they didn't have AC. <laughs> they didn't have air conditioning in 53. They had fans. Fact. They had fans and, and running right. and cars with windows open. So they were. I, I think they, were, they had people like cutting ice and bringing it. That down that could be it too. Yeah, yeah, putting ice in front of a big fan. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, they were. Uh, For more HVAC news, <laughs> uh-huh. follow Nash at hashtag Nash. <laughs> it's so early in the podcast already. <laughs> they were uh, sitting on Hilda's porch um, when Hilda noticed a large shadow move across her lawn, before getting a good look at what caused the shadow. In Hilda's words, 25 feet away, I saw a huge shadow across the lawn. I thought at first it was uh, the magnified reflection of a big moth caught in the nearby streetlight. Then the shadows seemed to bounce upward into a pecan tree. We all looked up. To a what? A pecan. A pecan tree. Yes. Okay. We all looked up. <laughs> And Thanks for the interjection. Yeah. I, 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 I heard it all wrong. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's when we saw it. Now, what all three of them saw was a very tall, uh, man-like figure standing around six and a half feet uh, with bat-like wings attached to its back, a black, tight-fitting outfit, and surrounded by a glowing yellow haze. Nice. I like the outfit already. <laughs> All three of them were absolutely scared of what they saw, but were unable to move due to um, shock. The figure lingered for about 30 seconds before the light began to fade out and the figure vanished. Okay, so just quick interjection. Sure. There's a shadow at 2.30 a.m. I know, I know. So it had to be like a full moon. It had to be super yeah. bright out. Yeah. Yeah, so. Or the street light that right. was mentioned in the article. Yeah. 
Okay, well, I guess if you want to go that route, <laughs> sure, whatever. Well, no, 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 go your route. Okay, full moon. <laughs> right. I was just the thinking, I was just thinking like a man wear bat kind of a thing. Right. Uh, <laughs> Judy then let out a piercing scream. And then this is Hilda uh, in her own words as well. Immediately afterwards, uh, we heard a loud swoosh over the housetops across the street. It was like the white flash of a torpedo-shaped object. I've heard so much about flying saucer stories, and I thought all those people telling the stories were crazy. But now I don't know what to believe. I may be nuts, but I saw it, whatever it was. I sat there stupefied. I was amazed. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, when they looked across the street, they saw another flash of light rise up uh, from another tree. And as Howard said, uh, it took off like a jet. Uh, The next morning... Hilda went to the authorities and made a police report of what they had seen. Now, I did see that there were uh, some other stories. There's a bunch of them. Yeah, Yeah, I would like... Like different versions of this. Before we discuss it deeper, I found a newspaper article uh, from a neighboring town, Lubbock, Texas. Mm -hmm. And in the Lubbock Morning Avalanche. (laughs) Now... (laughs) uh, I'm going to read it, and it's interesting how it's described... There's some... Discrepancies. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I don't know if it's an example of how things get sensationalized, but right. uh, this is from, well, somebody in Lubbock. The Lubbock Avalanche. <clears throat> Houston residents cite Batman on tree perch in yard. Houston, June 18th. Five persons, all of whom live in the same house, complained to police they saw a combination of Superman and Captain Midnight what? perched in an oak tree. Outside their home early Thursday and said he disappeared in the light of a mysterious rocket and a second uh, aerial display. Police said they were investigating the stories, but admitted they were not equipped to handle such phenomena as the five (laughs) persons described. Mrs. Hilda Walker, 23, accompanied by her husband, Lloyd, was the first to report uh, the affair to authorities. She said it was 2.30 a.m., and because it was so hot, her husband, the 14-year-old daughter of the landlady, and herself were all sitting on a porch when the entire yard seemed wrapped in a heavy shadow. All of a sudden, this shadow settled in a tree, she said. We all looked up and saw a Batman. He was balancing himself on a tree limb, and there was a dim gray light all around him. She said the creature was about six and a half feet tall, wearing a black cape, a skin tight, dark pants, quarter length boots, and looked like a white man. (laughs) Okay. I could see him plainly and could see he had big wings folded at his shoulders, she said. Walker and young Judy Myers, daughter of Mrs. Vivian Myers, agreed in all aspects. They said after the Batman perched in the tree a few moments, while they sat paralyzed and watched a mysterious white flame and smoke shot from behind him and a burning object like a flying paintbrush scooted across the horizon and the Batman faded from view. What? Wow. Mrs. Meyer said she got home just in time to see the flying paintbrush scoot across the sky. And another rumor, age 71, said he saw the weird shadowy fella in the tree. Uh, though he said he... Merely went back to bed. (laughs) The walkers agreed it couldn't have been their imagination and said they were uh, so upset that they were thinking about returning to Brian from where they moved only three months ago. Hmm. Now, boy, when that story traveled to this newspaper, (laughs) they changed a few details. I'm curious, is it Bat Spaceman, Batman, all one word, or Bat Dash Man? All one word. Batman. Yeah. Lowercase b. (laughs) So uh, this encounter only lasted seconds, but there have been other reports of a flying bird man or Batman right. in the area throughout the decades. So what's the, wasn't there a bunch of them in the 70s, like middle 70s? Yeah. There's um, a lot of good stuff happening in the 70s. <laughs> All right. Well, I only have one written <laughs> okay. down, and it's not very like specific. Um, in Rio uh, Grande City... There were rumors of a man bird that haunted the roof of a local tavern during the 1970s. Okay. Um, 
And then that's all I have for the 70s. Because I, I was just grabbing certain ones. The, no one else remembers anything. No. Yeah, it was, it was a hazy time. <laughs> the, one that I, the one that I remember was that there was a, there was a small child who was, who was playing, like playing in their backyard and by themselves. And I guess this, this man bird creature... Was they said it was only the child said it was about five feet tall, and must have they, they guess it was like I don't know two hundred pounds or something like that. Mm. But it it landed in the backyard, and when it landed in the backyard, the kid was alone. It left like talon marks in the ground. Mm. Okay, so but the talon marks they said when it landed, uh, I guess the kid freaked out and the guy uh, the man bird took off. And uh, the child went and got his parents, and the parents came out, and I guess the talon marks went into the ground two inches deep. Whoa. So they called the police, and they're like, what the heck is this? So the, the police guy came out, the officer came out, and like, he, I guess the police officer, I guess, weighed like 250, and he was trying to imitate how far into the ground the, the, the footsteps would go to try to gauge how much this thing was, or how much it weighed. And uh, come to find out, it could not make an indentation as deep as the bird, wow. the bird man. So they were saying that uh, um, that the bird couldn't have weighed two hundred pounds. It must have been so much bigger, and the child just didn't know, you know, didn't could, couldn't guess, right. was just guessing. But that the bird took off, and when it took off, it left these giant talon marks in the ground, which is wow. really cool. And there was there was another one that I kind of remember. It was about a a woman having a face to face with this bird man. Ooh. And inviting the Birdman in to have blueberry pancakes, hmm. and said that this as one does, yeah, yeah. as we do, yeah. And I guess the the uh, Birdman came in, and it and it was said the, the lady had said, well, he's got a great appetite, <laughs> ate as many as blueberry, made, ate as many blueberry pancakes as my husband does, <laughs> and then got up and left. Wow, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Case closed. <laughs> That's right. So they're trying to determine if, it, you know, so that led to the whole things like which, you know, the kid who, who saw the Birdman or Batman, they were saying. I was like, right. You do know uh, the topic we're discussing. It's yeah. the Houston Batman, yes. not the Houston Birdman. No, it was. Yeah. This was all in the same category. It was okay. all in the 70s. It all got yeah. put in the same thing. Well, this is 1953 we're talking about. Well, the okay. first one was in 53. Smarty Boots. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of them were like in the seventies, yeah. And uh, but they were saying, yeah, <laughs> they all got lumped together. So yes, thanks for took it, taking the steam out of my sails there. <laughs> oh, did I? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Wow. <laughs> nice. I'm kidding. Oh, nice boy. Now, do you have anything you want to add to that? Oh uh, no, I was about to uh, see how you're doing. Oh, okay. And then if yeah. you have, you want to continue? Sure. Uh, in the 1990s, multiple employees of the Bel Air Theater in Houston witnessed a gigantic helmeted man crouching on a rooftop. And I think we had briefly mentioned this when we were talking about Spring Hill Jack. Right. There's a connection yeah. between the Houston Batman. Mm -hmm. Again, the one paper described him having the boots. Right, okay. Right. Uh, you know, when they talk about smoke and flame, look like it was behind him. Like, well, what if it's like a jetpack? So there's <laughs> there. Some people are connecting Spring Hill Jack esque mm -hmm. type uh, creature with the Batman. Right. right. Now, in November of 2007, a San Antonio man named Frank Ramirez said that he had encountered an enormous winged humanoid on the city's south side one evening. I don't have a whole lot of specifics mm -hmm. here, but... Southside. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and then in April 2009... I'm so excited to say that. I was. <laughs> in April 2009, a woman was on her cell phone in the driveway when she looked up and saw a huge, dark-winged man gliding through the air. She ran to her house and called her husband and son to come out, and they were all able to see this man-bat figure flying by. Uh, it eventually disappeared out of sight, but mm -hmm. I didn't but, yeah. see. There was a couple of pictures of the creature flying. Did you? Okay. Yeah, and I don't know. I couldn't. I couldn't figure out what siding went into the pictures because they looked more like a. Uh, everything I saw that had pictures were using <clears throat> pictures of the Mothman. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. I saw that too. Look at stuff, yeah. Bob. Like uh, it. I did min uh, mention. Yeah, uh, when I was doing my research, I feel like they were mentioning 
Mothman is kind of like the one of the more uh, right. notorious right. ones that of the winged. Yes, right. yeah, I is also something. Else. I'm like, do you not know that's the Mothman statue uh, that uh, <laughs> right. photo you're using? Are you just right. not? Are you just right. posting this trying to get it out? You don't even care. You don't even know because uh, there was far too many articles using that Mothman statue. Right. I agree. <laughs> Thank you. I know. I was kind of like, you. right yeah. now, and I only have like uh, one more um, thing, but it's more of a legend in the area. The legend of La Lechuza. She helps you choose <laughs> your well, destiny. No, uh, she was a <laughs> witch who was murdered for practicing the devil's magic. Mm. Uh, so in revenge, she came back as a creepy bird lady. Uh, a shapeshifter who can appear as a woman, but then turns into a huge bird with a uh, woman's face, which is creepy right there. Bird, wait, wait, bird lower half woman's face? Yeah, woman's face. Because there was a whole thing about which half of the man was a bird man. Yeah, I know. Uh, no, tell me. <laughs> there was a whole thing. Uh-huh. Yeah, there, which half every, the... every encounter that I came across, they, they talked about which half of the... Batman, Birdman was the, the the flying part, which was the bat or the bird, and then which was man. No, I mean keep going. Yeah, yeah. The woman with the pancakes. It was the the top half was bird, the bottom was human. Oh, oh. see now this yeah. story changes a bit. Yeah, and then on the <laughs> on the, with the child. Now I understand why she invited him in. Yeah, and had yeah. blueberry pancakes. Yeah, he was he, he she wanted to. Uh, anyway. And there, there was, I was going to put something in about his, anyway. <clears throat> yeah, his beak that. is another word for his beak. Um, mm. It's a PG show. Mm-hmm. I know. <laughs> uh, but with a little kid, it was the bird half was the bottom half and the man half, although he could still fly. Mm. So I don't know how that works. And then the Batman sitting in the tree, I think, I don't, I don't know. It might have been all bat. Okay. I, I, I'm not sure. But if you're sitting in the tree, I think that I half think that he was getting ready to take a dump in the person's mm. yard and like, they caught him Batman sitting in the tree at <laughs> yeah. night yeah <laughs> and then they, that explosion that he had to come out of his back oh that was, oh. It, was it was a little emission and you're like woohoo and then it shot him up wow <laughs> you've never tried that I don't like being inside your head <laughs> okay <laughs> sometimes neither do I <laughs> uh, so some describe La, La Lechuza La Lechuza La Lechuza as a large seven foot tall bird with a 15 foot wingspan and the face of an old woman. And others say she is a small bird with the face of an old woman. Like I don't a, know which one's creepier. Like a harpy almost? Yeah, no, the harpy is. Yeah. 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 Uh, so she has been known to disguise her voice like a baby crying so that she can pounce on you when you come outside. Uh, she might even whistle outside your window to annoy you. And would you open the window to yell at the offending bird? She grabs you? She scratches your eyes out. Oh. <laughs> Wait, how tall was she? Uh, well, she's it varies. Either, yeah, it varies. The, the, um, the full grown, not the little one. The full uh, grown. Seven feet tall. Wow, that's a lot of bird going through a window to scratch your eyeballs out. <laughs> well, if you look out, if you, you know, you open your window and you... Lean your head out? You you're out? completely stick your yeah, head yeah, all the yeah, way out yeah. the window? <laughs> like there's a pie on another window next yeah. door, and you're like, hello. It's like a 1950s sitcom. <laughs> right. like, hey. yeah. uh, so um, what I have now is possible explanations as Ooh. to what this possibly could well, be. Well, I but... did find a few more sightings of oh. bat-like creatures. Yeah. Okay. This was in 2014. Okay. Um. Mom was at home with her daughter, and they saw a dude just walking across the, uh, started crossing in front of him. She slowed down, let him go. I don't know if it was a crosswalk. Um, hoodie, jeans, uh, lots of shadows. Couldn't make anything out of, about the person. But, you know, he, and all of a sudden, he kind of sped up. Wings burst from him. He grabbed a tree limb and then shot up into the night. Wow. And... She said her daughter was, was like, uh, Mom, did you see that bat? She's like, that wasn't a bat. It was a man bat. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but she also felt hypnotized, like why he was strolling across the road, like she mm-hmm. had to stop, was watching. Even her drive home, she just felt like just hypnotized by the creature that she just saw. Right. Like she was in a, a fog. So did the wings have a spot to come out? Because I don't picture wings being strong enough to tear through cloth. Yeah, like a hoodie. 
Yeah, that'd be a, that's some hardcore stuff. Yeah, you could yeah. Be a modified ho- hoodie where you had like like slits, slits for your wings. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. But the, but it'd be hard to disguise that. Like maybe that's the hypnotized part. Oh yeah. Oh okay. So she thought she was just seeing the dude in some blue jeans and a hoodie, but so that could actually could be more. Is it harpy esque? No, is it harpy? Who who always uh, lured sailors to their death on the rocks? Sirens, the siren, like more of a siren because the because they would <coughs> the siren song like a like a low level song that would hypnotize anybody around them, kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know to, to to not see that you have giant fifteen foot wings underneath your hoodie. Mm-hmm. That would be kind of hard to do because you would look like you have fifteen foot wings. Crumpled up well, your hood. That was the witch. No, don't look oh, at me like I the, just relaying what I found on the internet. <laughs> yeah. the, we didn't get a size of the wings on the. Oh, that's the, true. Yeah. Well, Batman. speaking of size of wings, um, <laughs> so in, in 1998, a couple friends were uh, uh, going home. It was like 11 o'clock at night. Uh, I think they were walking home from uh, playing some Nintendo at their buddy's house. And, uh, Nintendo? They, yeah. Nice. And they heard uh, this really strange noise above them in the sky. So they look up and they described it as, uh, now they described it afterwards as something out of the movie um, Jeepers Creepers. Oh. Okay. Now he said, yes, this was before Jeepers Creepers, but as he typed this, that's what popped to his mind. And that was like a big man winged right. uh, yeah. crazy creature. Right. And uh, so, of course, they ran as fast as possible to get home, shut the door. And he was describing it as it had a wingspan of at least seven feet, which That's seems not small, a whole lot. right? That's not unless he meant one half, you know, just the on each side, seven right. foot wings. Yeah. But otherwise, that's not that big. Right. Now, if you remember the a hole, right? No, that had uh, a pretty big wingspan. So that was like a well, that was like a giant bat, uh, ape like, right? Crazy creature. But that was much bigger than a seven. Isn't seven the math that it needs to be like like a wingspan? Yeah. Uh, so like a bat that is six feet tall, it would need a wingspan of eighteen feet right. or more. Wow. Yeah. Right. All right. So, so even if it was seven foot each side, that's only fourteen foot wingspan. Mm-hmm. That still could get it. It'd have to be like right? a hummingbird. I mean, that's yeah, they really put some effort into that thing. Sure. The little little teeny tiny wings means you got to go faster. Oh <laughs> jeez. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. So, possible explanations for you guys. Uh, it's an undiscovered species or cryptid. Um, Ken Gerhard, he's a cryptozoologist from Texas. He believes that the existence of these big birds is possible. And if they do exist, their home base has to be somewhere like completely unexplored and remote. Um, Which is not Texas, though, right? I mean, there's thousands of acres of right. dense. Well, there's like mm-hmm. you uh, know forest and swamp and, in that area, mm-hmm. right? Um, and they could also have like a a pretty wide, um, like they can travel miles, mm-hmm. well, like thousands fly. of miles. They yeah. should be able to fly, and they should be able to right. Cover. But it should be yeah, it should be a yeah. pretty I don't know. In caves, <laughs> where's that that cave system that the. Mm. Isn't it thousands and thousands or millions of bats come out every night? Mm-hmm. Like, isn't that in Texas also? I think it is. I think it is also. So it could be down there. Yeah. Um, is it an alien? Mm, yes, Possibly. <laughs> uh, I mean, the glow that's surrounding it. Right. Um, mm. And then it kind of just disappeared. Right. Uh, there is that possibility that it might be an alien. Um, is it just an owl or a large bird? No, <laughs> definitely not. I have a couple. Let's see. That was in the 70s. Uh, in 1976, outside of San Antonio, um, two different people in two different vehicles saw what looked like a giant bird with bony structures and a wingspan from 15 to 20 feet long flapping its wings. That sounds about right. It reminded one of them, who was a teacher of a Pteranodon. Pteranodon? Pteranodon, sure. Uh, <laughs> which is an extinct flying reptile. Uh, the same year, a man heard something slam the side of his home. And when he went outside to see what happened, he was face to face with a bird like creature that was four feet tall uh, with eyes the size of silver dollars. He said it had wings, but it definitely wasn't a bird. Hmm. 
Batman can't see wi- uh, <laughs> glass. <laughs> <laughs> Batman's flying into the glass. Or- <laughs> uh, it could also be an interdimensional time traveler, mm. which I find kind of fun. Like, I didn't humans in the future have evolved to have wings? Yes. Ooh. Or maybe that's their ship, the way okay. they travel. Right. I don't know. But mm. I didn't go that route. I didn't think about that route. No. I kind of that's interesting. I mean, I I think it's it's very clear cut and very simple. Mm-hmm. I think there are so many bats because we're in Texas. There's there's you know everywhere. There's there's bats. I was gonna say there's bats everywhere. Yeah, there's bats everywhere. Yeah. There's bats everywhere. This very clearly some genetic manipulation happening. <laughs> some cross genes. Somebody made a man bat. It's Occam's razor. It's the simplest explanation of them all. Is the correct one? Hmm. Well, you know, I'm gonna call Ken uh, Gerhardt and tell him to stop researching. Uh, the man bat because you already done. solved it. It's done. Right. It's cracked. The case is <laughs> case is done. It's closed. Yep. Done job. Yeah, Ken, don't wait any more time. Right. Yeah, because now I solved. It. I figured it out. That's right. <laughs> it did. It just didn't do a very good job at it. That's why you only see him every once in a great while. Yeah. But yeah, it's definitely genetic splicing. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. I, I mean, imagine being a man bat and be having the wrong half. Oh. Right, that would really suck. You'd have really skinny, odd legs with the, with the claws that stuck in the ground. Really hard to fly. You might have to run a little bit. That <sighs> really, it's uh, no good. That's why there's so many varying degrees of this creature. You'd rather have the top a man's half. body and a bat's head. No, yeah, the top half. So you're like your torso would be bat. So you had wings, right? And like the bat head, but human legs. I don't see how that's much better. Well, then you could. Do your business behind, you know, whenever you need to do your business. And it, like, I don't it, understand. Yeah, I don't. I, <laughs> use the restroom. You would. <laughs> you could just you do your business as but you're if, flying. But, <laughs> but the <laughs> the lower part of the then of you a don't have regular then you, back can do his business wise flying too. Right. But then you don't really have the full wingspan because it's your bottom half that is bat style, not the top half. It's the top half wouldn't be a, wouldn't be fully developed. It'd be really hard to fly. Hmm. Why am I entertaining I know. Uh, this whole thing? <laughs> Why am I trying to picture what you're describing? <laughs> no. A no really Nash. tall no. person with, with a bottom half of bat legs and bat butt, you know, and little teeny tiny underdeveloped wings. And then the torso is kind of human-like and the head is human-like. Or the flip side would be the torso and head of a bat with human legs from the waist down. Human parts from the waist down. Mm. That just sounds like something out of the uh, cantina on Tatooine. Mm. That, that, that could be. That could be. That could be. Let's mm-hmm. <laughs> move on. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have an ejection seat handle on this episode? Right, right. No, it's the mute button. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't recording a single thing Nash just said there. <laughs> I know. Uh, okay. Um, phew, my brain needs scrubbed. Um, Lish? Uh, the last thing it could possibly be is a hoax. <laughs> so, right. um, True. Yeah. And I just have like a miscellaneous uh, thing. So Ken Gerhardt, I think he uh, he moved to Texas because he was kind of obsessed with learning more about this creature. But uh, he did so much uh, research trying to find uh, that home on uh, yeah because it's not there anymore yeah it's not there anymore I don't remember did it get paved Look over at you. or oh, I was no, I don't know why Ken didn't just call you first where he bothered oh, to move I, I'm telling yeah. you did it get I don't remember if uh, I remember they got paved over or I think if it's, it's something else now though. part of Interstate 10 yeah yep. so yeah. get turned into a freeway yeah. yep. that's a good situation if you're ever selling a house. The government comes through and runs a freeway through your house. Mm. They, they, they they buy a top dollar. Mm. Nice. I saw a documentary on that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they were going to blow up Earth for it. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah. I, I saw mm. that one. Yeah. 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 They created bypass. Yeah. Nice. Always remember a towel, everybody. Right. Yeah. Dave, I'm disappointed. You used the <laughs> yeah. word documentary. <laughs> Snashes. Ah! <laughs> 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 Welcome to the dark side. <laughs> no. <laughs> No. Hmm. All right. Anything about the Batman? Um, Batman. Batman. All right. So I guess we're moving on. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, according to a review by the National Geographic in 2011, 86% of the Earth's species have not been fully discovered. Right. So mm. there is that there also. Is like, that, but the whole thing of the yellow glow mm-hmm. and... I, I, 
you know, based on what I was looking at, I couldn't tell if they were talking if the paintbrush was a ship or was oh. it turned in, you know, like how it was mm-hmm. flying. Fa- like, you know, so if, you know, she, her quote even said that, you know, she heard about all these flying saucers and right, thought people right. were crazy. So it sounded like she was thinking this was a flying saucer right. type thing. So if it was alien, did it fly away and then came back in the 70s? It, there's a lot of, yeah, you know, weirdness to this, obviously. Mm-hmm. I agree. <laughs> We all agree. Yeah. That's the best thing you've said all day. <laughs> I agree with you, Dave. There is weirdness. All right. Well, uh, then I guess we can agree we're going to take a break. We'll come right back with more bat stuff. And we're back. All right. Batman. Yeah. Houston Batman. Uh, any final thoughts on anything about the story of 1953, the Houston Batman? No. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice. I, mean, yeah, I, I still I go back to the whole the story itself with the three different people sitting out there right, it sounded really weird uh-huh. the news article kind of gave more that you know the the husband of the housewife was there mm-hmm. yeah, there, there was another roommate who saw it and like Meh, whatever going back to bed right, yeah. <laughs> so you know overall it was like yeah, the it sounded like the the press article was a little bit more credible than mm-hmm. the direct witness interviews yeah and it, it but, seemed to me that the three witnesses in 53 that saw it because there was the what the 23 year old housewife the 14 year old kid and then the guy mm-hmm. but the guy i think it just seemed like it, they had to use the guy to give us some kind of a credibility uh, because he was he's a tool inspector yes yeah so he has to he's like certified to be an inspector of whatever. He's a tool inspector? He's a tool <laughs> inspector. That's what it said. He was a tool inspector. Yeah. They have tool inspectors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you were there, he would have known exactly what he's looking He'd for. He'd be like, yeah, yeah, that's a tool over and there. a tool. And then when he looked up, and they, except that, that way they had... Dave all, gets me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got it, too. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry. Um, that way they had all the different varieties of people to kind of corroborate so that, mm-hmm. so that it would give it some kind of validity. But... Right. Yep. But I do think that the yellow glue had to do for methane. I think the guy was there to to yeah. drop a stinker. Mm-hmm. Okay. They saw him and he was like, "Oh no!" And then you know, let out a little extra, which is, <laughs> which is how he, when he took off. Yeah. And then off again, he uh, Ken Sorry. Gerhard, uh, stop, it your, out. stop your research. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Uh, yeah. Nash solved it. Yep. Done. Uh, a little bit of science corner. Um, oh God, Dave, science corner. Yeah. You, <laughs> you mentioned earlier about you know it's. 2.30 in the morning, yep. how was there a shadow? But um, the the night sky is not black. It's Right, it has stars. Well, it has stars, but it's actually the, it's the, his, the it's color. It's science corner. Let him finish. Oh, sorry. The color of space is not black. It's um, There's actually a term for it, which I should have looked up in the break <laughs> and didn't. Um, but so much for science corner. Yeah, I, mean, I know, um, right? <laughs> the, uh, that's the reason why uh, a dark camouflage has light spots to it because if you're pure black you will show up as a shadow mm-hmm. on top of the, the 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 night sky so the even if it was 230 and there was no other light it wasn't full moon it wasn't street lights the full black shadow would have shown up on uh, you know showed mm-hmm. up on the, the sky i just think so i just think that be for to be to be up at 230 because it was too hot for me would be would be two things like a full moon because it's hard to go to sleep during a full moon anyway because i want to turn into a wolf you know whatever um but it could have also been cloudy right because it was probably super humid that's why they wanted to be outside where it was a little bit cooler and some mm-hmm. air movement right. so bright sky humid and they're outside so that would explain the shadow because mm-hmm. it, it was it was quite bright out because of the full moon mm-hmm. or po- you know. You're assuming there was a full moon. Yeah, not yeah. necessarily a full moon, but it was enough light coming from the reflection from the moon itself, mm-hmm. and the clouds coming through. So that way, it was the why everybody was up at, up at that time. Mm-hmm. I feel like uh, Nash interrupted Dave's science corner, mm-hmm. but still, yeah. science got, corner. Yeah, <laughs> got enough of it through. <laughs> you know, there was another sighting of a bat in Texas. This would be Austin, Texas. During, uh, this was just uh, this year, for the uh, premiere of uh, The Batman Hmm. at a theater in Austin, Texas, somebody... With a twinkle guy? Somebody smuggled in a real bat. And in the middle of uh, everybody watching The Batman, they let it go. 
Oh. And some people freaked out, and the theater was like, you know, hey, uh, you know, let's stop it. Uh, we'll give refunds for anybody. But a lot of people like, uh, no, we want to keep watching the movie with the bat flying around. So huh. they also beefed up their security so people can't smuggle bats in <laughs> to the theater anymore. Right. But there you go. Just trying to think of smuggling in a bat would be pretty easy to do. Um, no, no, yeah. Uh, start with uh, how you uh, captured the bat. Yeah. Well, you have a bat box. They're only, they're little teeny tiny guys. Okay, so you got it in a bat box. Oh, so then you just take the bat box and you put it in the you in could, your you backpack. Could you could literally just take them in and put them in your little inside pocket of a jacket. Maybe as snug as ah, a bug. Bat. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm wondering about the security. So the only way to get a bat then through security or the security to be beefed up, they have to get like pat downs. Hmm. Dude, it, like. This is, I don't want to go too far with this, but uh, you're <laughs> smuggling in a bat box, but they're doing pat down, so there's only one place you can put that bat box. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. In your prison wallet. Yeah. That's right. Because it's the ultimate prank. I, I'm willing to endure this to unleash <laughs> a bat during the movie The Batman. <laughs> Speaking of. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Speaking of uh, movies and thing. bats. Uh, I'm going to ask you guys, what are some of your favorite movies with a Batman, a man bat, a bat-like creature, a vampire bat? Uh, are you got any movies that you love, you watch all the time, or you could recommend that involves any type of bat? Morbius. Nobody agrees with you, because <laughs> no. I haven't seen it, but from what I heard, no, no, it's so actually, good. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, having with a bat in it? Anything. It could be any form of superhero to vampire. Wow, that's tough. I have to give a second to think about that. My okay. Goodness. I don't know. I mean, I feel like there's a niche out there that they haven't explored with a superhero that would really, you know, evolve to be like a Batman. Right. The Batman. <laughs> to be more of like a man bat. Anyway, right. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, obviously you got all the, your Batman movies. Mm -hmm. But what ones would you put up uh, the, top of that list? Oh, The Dark Knight. The Dark Knight? Yep. Yeah. Dark Knight or you The know, Batman. I'm a fan of uh, Tim Burton's Batman. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm I feel like that was uh, in the 90s. It was, it was perfect. We mm -hmm. got to see Batman, Michael Keaton. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, The Dark Knight. Actually, I'm yeah. a big fan of Batman Begins because I love yeah. the origin story. Mm. I feel like, okay. This makes sense how a dude in a suit mm -hmm. could kick uh, butt because right. he learned how to fight with a sword and there's things he got on his arms and he was trained. Right. Um, so I was like that. Mm -hmm. I'm still thinking. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you move into like the uh, vampires, the classic Lost Boys. Oh, mm. yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah, that's a good one, too. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. You know the, the, the uh, saxophone player from that movie? Tina Turner's saxophone player? Uh, the guy who has like a chain around his yeah. neck. He's playing this weekend. Uh, this yeah, man. Weekend. He's getting a whole career out of playing with his shirt off. Yeah. 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 He's playing this weekend here in town. It's great. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There you go. I'm going to probably stick with The Lost Boys. I watched that movie more times than I can count. I've watched it so many times. I'll stick with The Lost Boys. Okay. Yeah. But you don't have to stick with one. I mean, you could have many favorites. I mean, uh, Fright Night. That's yeah. from the 1985, I think. I think so. Not the not the remake with uh, Colin. with uh, Colin Farrell, yeah. the original from 85, 86, what, something like that. Blade, mm -hmm. yeah, eh, yeah. Blade was great. I I, I do want to see the new one coming out with uh, what's his name? Oh, Marichala Holly. Hey, thank you. Okay. Yeah, almost had it. Yeah, yeah. Maraschino Cherry, I, that guy. <laughs> Well, he's no longer a listener of our Marcia show. Marciana or... Ali or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I want to see that. Right. I want to see that blade. Mm -hmm. No, but I mean, there's nothing fantastic. wrong with the Wesley Snipes blade. Yeah, I didn't uh, like Blade the Trinity. No, but uh, Blade One and Two. I, I really yeah. Blade One. I didn't like the villain. Um, Brad, what's his name? No, uh, oh jeez, uh, Dorf. No, Brad. Oh, Stephen uh, Dorf. Stephen Dorf. Dorf. Yeah. Um, the uh, I didn't like him as a villain, but I thought Wesley Snipes as Blade was great. Was and then Blade Two, uh, directed by Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that was a good one. Right. Uh, even uh, then, uh, the guy he would direct to be Hellboy, mm -hmm. uh, Ron Perlman was in in that also. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a great movie. Trinity should have been good. Had mm -hmm. Ryan Reynolds in it, right? I know. And Jessica um, Biel. 
and Jessica Biel, but mm. it just it wasn't that great. I think Blade One was the first time I had ever witnessed them using sunblock. They putting the idea of putting sunblock yeah. on a vampire. I think that's the first time I ever saw that. Hmm. Um, how about uh, Thirty Days of Night? Oh man, yeah, that's a good one. Based that, on a comic book of the same name. Wasn't that the one where they're actually in a, in a ship? Actually, they're no, they're no. Uh, in Alaska. Uh, I forget the town uh, in Alaska. Borrow, I think. Uh, and yeah. for thirty days, there is no sun. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And the vampires figured this out at some point along the line. They decided to go up there and mm-hmm. like, hey, we could feed for thirty days. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that mm-hmm. one's really good. Mm-hmm. I didn't see it. Mm-hmm. Comic book's great. The art is phenomenal. Okay. Okay. I I have it. You can borrow it. Okay. It's it's Halloween season. I know. So now start yeah. watching the movies. I got to bone up for our trivia thing. Ugh. If you think for a second you're going to beat me, <laughs> at least at any, if there's any horror movie questions, I right. hope I can uh, smoke both you fools. Right. Oh, well, if that's anything with, with uh, Freddy Krueger, I got gotcha. you. No, there's uh, no horror. Uh, but gonna, you're both gonna spoke me depend you know, regardless. Spoke of you spoke, you. <laughs> spoke me. <yeah. laughs> totally gonna spoke you, bro. Are uh, right, any other uh, movies with uh, uh bat esque themes that you guys love or would recommend? It's I don't know if it's great, but I'm a huge fan of John Carpenter, period. So John Carpenter's vampires. Mm-hmm. You know, it's all right. Uh was it James Woods and yep. yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. What about the sequel? I did not see the sequel. Mm-hmm. John Bon Jovi. You're kidding me. <laughs> Is it good? I don't remember it. Is it John Carpenter, did he actually direct it? John, I, I don't know. I think the title's John Carpenter's Vampires Los Moret, Mor, Mor, Muertes. 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 Yeah. And it's John Bon Jovi. I saw it once. Never. It's not memorable. And never again. Yeah. Okay, that's all the recommendation I need. There right. was a Tremors movie with, with where they turn into bats. Yeah, yeah. It was, I don't like tre- that. it was like Tremors Five, where they got wings and they started flying around like bats. Oh, <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's scary. Well, Underworld. <laughs> that's about yeah. vampires yeah. Uh, versus werewolves. Right. Yeah, that's all right. Those were always fun. Now, okay. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you, Dave. They're they're fun. Yeah. I'm not saying they're great movies, but right. they're fun. But you seem to have an issue right out of the gate. Yeah, they're okay. I just wasn't really wild about them. No, he's just doing his thing. Where no, he, I just wasn't. Uh-huh. I, they made like five of them, and what's her face in leather was always a great idea. Yeah. You know. <laughs> That's why I watched it. Okay. No, well, there you go. Mm. But still, I'm going to stick with Lost Boys. I think that's an excellent pick. Yeah, that's that's my choice. Dave, is there one uh, badass movie that you have to watch every year? No. No. Mm. <laughs> we just recently watched The Dark Knight. Did we? Yeah, I think Was right around right? the time we watched <laughs> The Batman. Oh, okay. Although the car in The Batman was wonderful. That's yeah. my favorite Batmobile so you far. Yeah, but... The movie, the, the the latest one with Robert uh, Patterson. Uh, oh, speaking of vampires, wasn't he in the really yes, the he was. Uh, yeah, the really count. crappy? Doesn't uh, count. That's not a vampire. It, they're yeah, they sparkly. They're, they're not they vampires. Nothing to do with this Mm-mm. topic. Sorry, whatsoever. no offense to anybody that loves uh, Twilight, but that's not no, <laughs> no. We can't be friends. <laughs> <laughs> but I actually thought the Batman was a was a good movie. Yeah, dark, gritty, long. Yeah. It was very. I mean. It was a long movie. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Thanks for your review. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right. We beat that bat to death. Mm-hmm. Well, there's the bat movies that we like. What bat movies do you like? And I can guarantee you we missed a boatload. Even classics like Nosferatu. Yeah. I know we missed a lot of really good mm-hmm. movies with a bat theme. Right. Whether it be a vampire or the Batman. Or the movie with, uh, it was just called Bats. I forget the actor who was in Dracula it. Dracula Untold wasn't bad. Oh, with... Uh, with... Uh, I forget his name. Where he gets all his powers and he's, you see him in the army killing all the people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Or that just one. Dracula. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 yeah. yeah. Wasn't Leslie Nielsen uh, also Dracula in a yeah. movie? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, that bat's dead. We've been killing it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. dead. Congratulations. Yeah. Moving on. All right. Hey, but if you have some recommendations, because it is Halloween time, I love a good vampire movie. And then with Keanu Reeves, well, that was pretty good. That was Dracula. Oh, I thought you were talking about the original, original Dracula. 
The black and white with one. With Bella Lugosi? Yeah. No, I was talking about the one with, uh, well, Keanu Reeves yeah. as uh, Renfeld. Yeah. yeah. Renfeld. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. It's like, whoa, big, whoa you're big, like a vampire. Like a vampire, man. Bram Stoker's Dracula. There you yeah, go. Yeah, yes. that's a one. Uh, uh, Gary Oldman was yep. uh, Dracula, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Winona Ryder. Was, uh, yeah. yep. You got you got an issue with her now? Uh, she, I loved her in Stranger Things. But you didn't like her uh, as uh, Nina Harker? No, I thought she was okay as Nina Harker. Huh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. So that's why everybody... Uh, <laughs> Doesn't tune into national movies, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. All right, we're moving on. Seriously, we're moving on. Uh, just a couple uh, uh, listener feedback things here. Since we're recording this so back to back to the other one, didn't have time to gather. But we heard from at Louis the Dork on Twitter. I've told my Discord about you guys several times. Y'all seem to really enjoy the paranormal just as much as I do. Thanks for the great entertainment. Oh. And by the way, there is a haunted asylum here in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, Sheboygan. out in the middle of nowhere. Might be worth checking out. Mm. So it's the Sheboygan, am I saying that right? Yep. Uh, asylum. And I think they do ghost tours. Nice. Ooh. It looks uh, creepy. I think there was two of the travel, I mean, travel channel, the ghost channel. Uh, <laughs> two of their shows uh, explored it. I haven't mm-hmm. seen the episodes, but it looks Super cool. Mm-hmm. And, Should boy, yeah. uh, when we get, uh, when the Ghost and Gastro Pubs bus mm-hmm. is traveling around to uh, haunted locations and breweries, hey man, this might be on the list. Mm-hmm. I just like saying the word Sheboygan. Sheboygan. It's a fun one to say. And <laughs> Art Design 305 said if we're in Florida, we should check this out. Now, Dave, for some reason, I just feel like this is all you. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's the Medieval Torture Museum. Oh, yeah, that's all me. <laughs> we are the largest interactive historical museum in the U.S., occupying more than 6,000 square feet with over 100 unique implements and devices on display. Oh, Sweet. Enter the minds. Interactive. Of, <laughs> enter the minds of fanatics, madmen, and murderers and discover the world's most detailed collection of confinement and torture devices. Mm. We believe that those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it and have amassed an unprecedented collection of cruelty based on historical documents and engravings, (laughs) offering a chilling look at the darkest parts of human history. Are you brave enough? (laughs) Good times. Good times. (laughs) Yeah. uh, Yeah. I mean, if I'm ever in Florida, that sounds like a place to check out. Sure. Like, sure. Go to the beach, <laughs> yeah. go to NASA, yeah. do the Disney thing, and stop by the medieval mm. torture. Shop. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Get an opportunity to be hung and drawn and quartered. You could do the medieval torture and medieval times. Right. And get kind of right. that whole theme going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Interactive con- confinement? You said one of the things that I had was confinement. Back? Yeah, I already closed the browser. Oh, really? <laughs> Please don't make me open it back <laughs> okay, up. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's probably your stockade or yeah mm. yeah. Um, uh, I just that would be a good that would be a cool place to go check out. Yeah, I wonder what if we, uh, we were all transported to medieval times. Number one, we, we wouldn't be a podcast, but we'd be a traveling band of uh, bards. <laughs> uh, but if we got in trouble, I'm like, what would Nash be putting the stock for? What wouldn't Nash? <laughs> what wouldn't Nash be putting the stockade <laughs> yeah. for? Okay, hmm. but they got to put something above. The stockade, so when people throw tomatoes at him, they know how to make fun of him. Oh, he would say, no tomatoes, he enjoys it too much. Mm-hmm. Oh, true. <laughs> hmm. Do you think uh, we would actually, if we were a traveling band of bards talking about the paranormal, oh, we would be we would be in the stockades and we'd be, in we'd be all We'd be all witches. Yeah, and, yeah, we'd yes. 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 For her- heresy. Mm-hmm. Right. So, yeah, we couldn't do this podcast. Mm-hmm. Right. Back in, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. We, could, we could we would be a traveling band of uh, just singers talking about t- tall tales in foreign lands. Well, I could see us pulling off a, a whole thing like Brothers Grimm. Mm. Yeah, okay. where we go around and we set these things up and make some coin off of. Okay, alleviating things. Well, that sucks for me. I'm always going to be the monster. Oh yes, because I was just thinking what we do as we come and tell tales of these creatures. But yeah, we're kind of like the musketeers. Like we're going to go out. 
and uh, slay this creature, but it's all about uh, right, right. You know, drumming up business to give us some mm-hmm. coin to, yeah. for our entertainment because like, oh, these guys are monster hunters. Yes. Mm-hmm. If but I right, were... then it'd be Nash. We're dressing him up. I'd be the monster as the, the monster. Time. Right. Yep. Yep. If I learned anything from, which also um, makes it sound like we're rolling into town and stealing people's monies with our tales of <laughs> monsters. Right. Maybe that's not a good line yeah. of work. Okay. <laughs> Well, just better than watch the documentary right. Brothers <laughs> right. Grimm, and you'll see how it turns out. Right, Brothers Grimm, and the one with uh, Dennis Quaid and Sean Connery as the dragon, the um, Braveheart, um, Dragonheart, Dragonheart. Um, I don't yeah, know, the, I don't the, the one with uh, Sean Connery, and, <laughs> yeah, Braveheart, Braveheart. It wasn't Mel Gibson that uh, <laughs> right. it was. Yeah. I am Sean William Connery. Wallace. Yeah. No, it's not that one. But the uh, yeah, if uh, if I learned anything from them, it's that in the medieval times, the the key was to come up with a ruse to convince the village people that right. something bad was happening right, and save them from it. And that's how you made coin. Yes. All right. So then we would uh, hmm. still be the paranormal punchers because they would be like, oh, they're going right. to save us <laughs> yeah. from the creature that's running around. Hmm. It looks like very familiar to the guys in the bar right now. Hmm. Yeah, we would. We'd, <laughs> we'd, we'd mess it up. Yeah. We'd be in the stockades. Yeah. Or worse. Mm-hmm. Or worse. Mm-hmm. Well, all right, there you go. That's uh, if you were in the medieval times. That's uh, how paranormal punchers would be. Yeah. We'd be bandits, I guess. Right, <laughs> roving bandits, rogues. So, speaking of medieval times uh-huh. and bats and vampires, getting weirder. So I saw something in the news Uh-oh. about they were unearthed this grave over in Poland. Uh, this was this last week or two, um, and this apparently was the grave of a uh, a local businesswoman she was very wealthy and died i forget it was the 1600s or 1700s okay but they were worried she was a vampire Mm -hmm. okay and so they set it up so that if she came back to life as a vampire they put a sickle over her neck so that when she sat up she would decapitate herself (laughs) nice to prevent her from resurrecting as a vampire so i just thought that was interesting Kind of tied into the, today's bat stories and vampire stories. Wait, what? Well, to the very end uh, to yeah. bring that up. <laughs> right, yep. mm-hmm. So wait, so so they unearthed this this grave, okay. and they thought, well, she could be a vampire. Well, uh, not the people unearthing the grave, the people who originally buried her. Uh, yeah, you were yeah. listening to the <laughs> so story. So did, did, did they like like <laughs> notate? Did they put something on the on the actual casket? <laughs> I mean, or something? You literally <laughs> just told. <laughs> As an archaeologist, I put sickles <laughs> over all of the graves right. I own. Right. <laughs> I thought. I thought that. I thought when they're getting ready to open the grave, that uh, the people who were going to open it, they put the sickles on just to no. be sure. No, no, no. no, that time has passed. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's all in the logistics. I, I, sure. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I got that story wrong. Yeah. <laughs> The people who buried her put the right. sickle. Yes. Yes. Right, yeah. Oh, my God. I thought the people who were going to unearth her were afraid. Right. So they put a sickle over her. Dave, over man, her. when you interjected with this uh, uh, quip, it was perfect. And then Nash. You're right. <laughs> I, I missed some of it. <laughs> some you, but you were sitting right next to him. Well, right? I'm on my second beer. It's all right. Oh, okay. It's a, it's a, oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. You're yeah. right. You were distracted. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anything else? No, I don't think so. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I don't think so. All right, hey, if you want to send us uh, any feedback, a paranormal story, just go to paranormalpunchers.com. You'll find all the ways to contact us, all the social medias. We have a Halloween special we're working on, so get mm-hmm. ready because it is Halloween season. Oh, yeah. Yep. Right? It should always be Halloween season. I know. No. Well, way. September is basically Christmas Halloween. Is the best. Eve. Nah, I disagree. Right. The whole month. Right. Halloween. Yeah. Uh, is greater than Christmas, Ugh. right? Come on, oh, you get to yeah. try, it, it, it's so cool. Actually, the best holiday of all of them, everywhere, is your birthday, Cinco de Mayo. Oh, oh. okay. I was going to say my birthday. Why? Because holiday, but you're crushing margaritas. <laughs> it's the whole basis of Cinco de Mayo is to sit back and have a margarita. I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure our friends in uh, Mexico would disagree yeah. that there's a bigger meaning. <laughs> to there, there, is, there probably is, but right. that's what it means to... Same thing with St. Patrick's Day. Mm-hmm. You know, it... yeah, yeah, I say single to mile. It's a little bit more relaxed. Okay. I'm going to stick with Halloween is awesome, mm-hmm. and we're full <clears throat> Halloween mode, and we got our Halloween special coming yeah. your way. 
where Mark loses in a trivia contest. I will put uh, uh, 20 bucks. 20 bucks. You guys want to mm-hmm. bet 20 bucks? You, you, do you want to? Uh, I already know my outcome. <laughs> I'm not well, that, no, it's not, that's not that you or I win, Dave. It's just that we have to be sure that Mark does not. Well, then that would mean you or Dave would win. Right. There's and, only three of us playing. Right. Correct. But, and I know I'm not, so, and I don't trust you that much. So. Oh! Wow. 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 I've been cramming horror movies. I'm and then gonna, I, now I'm like envisioning the, uh, horror, the 15th honey. century version of our <laughs> podcast. And that's when Dave just threw you yeah. to, <laughs> to the Inquisition <laughs> so he could get out of it. Right, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. I see how it is. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> and on that note, we cue the music. <laughs> Some, somebody out there got it. Map, map, map. Oh. Mm. I know. Some listeners, they got it. If it's not weird. It's not worth checking out. Yeah.